Hmm. All right. But you're still in a practice session, so you got to start webinar. All right. Welcome, everybody. I think we're live on Facebook. We are live on Facebook. So hello, hello. I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's certainly beautiful here in the Kansas City area. Great to see you all today. So we're going to be talking about radiation today. And um, I hope that kind of intrigues some of you. Uh, there's lots of things in the news all the time for years and years, you know. I can remember as a child having uh, scares, you know, and uh, just thought this might be an interesting, interesting topic for a couple different reasons. So that's what we're heading for is to talk a little bit more about radiation. So we also have um, possibilities for you to, you know, raise your hand and uh, share a testimony with us. And uh, you can uh, put some of your questions in the chat. Uh, that type of thing as we go along. And uh, Joseph and John will be answering and talking with us back and forth also. I am so uh, blessed to have two sons, both my sons, <laughs> working uh, with me. And I appreciate them very, very much and all of their talents and uniqueness. So we're just gathering up here for another minute, but we are just about ready to be talking about some radiation ideas. And so I've got, hope you've got your wave watch with you, or you are possibly looking at buying a wave watch and maybe you've seen it somewhere else, but we'll hope to share just a couple of ideas out of a thousand different ideas that are on the wave watch. So I think I'll go ahead and just start sharing my screen and see if I can get those uh, set up correctly. There's so many buttons to press here. Still getting it done. Okay, so for the third time, we're going to be talking about re radiation. So um, join us with some questions and ideas later as we go along. Well, I would love for my screen to change. There we go. So obviously we're talking about the Wave Watch today and what we can do to protect ourselves a little bit with some of the uh, frequencies on the Wave Watch. So of course the Wave Watch has now been updated to a thousand different uh, settings to correct imbalances in your body, all using acoustical sound. Now don't forget, there's three buttons on the side and you simply adjust the sound. Most people want the sound within the four to eight range. You don't want it to be loud. You just want your body to absorb it. And so the top button up here is gonna turn it uh, up and the middle button turns it down. This button right here on the side, you hold it for three seconds to turn it on, two seconds turns it off. And then it also um, basically goes blank or black. Um, to save energy, it is still running behind the scenes. And if you want to see what's up on the screen, you just touch this button one second to be able to see what is playing on the watch at that time. We have a couple of new updates on the website. And I have shown these before, but want to just make sure that everybody has heard about them. Um, Ina Schmidt uh, works uh, diligently to do so many things for us. And she was able to put an alphabetical list of Facebook Live, YouTube, and Rumble topics. So you can just click on this button and then she gives you a link and you can choose for the topic. There are at least 80 some topics alphabetically. And if you want to watch it on Facebook or if you want to watch it on Rumble, YouTube, you have those options. And this, she has also added a frequency path list because some people, you know, do have the booklet, but may not be able to find 
you know, what they're wanting as easy as they, they hope for. Um, and uh, she has kind of given you a different way to go through that booklet. And then she also has some video reviews on YouTube. So anyway, I hope that you will uh, check those out. If you are uh, wanting to share the Wave Watch with anybody else, that might be a great thing or way to do it. Or if you have a specific topic, just go in here and click it and you can share that link or review it, watch it for yourself. I know this might be boring and some of you already know this, but really we do have a disclaimer that we have to mention each time. And we're not saying that the Wave Watch is going to to diagnose you at all. That's what all of these uh, teaching episodes, if I can say teaching, because I am a teacher, I have a certified teacher taught for years and we're sharing ideas with you. We are not diagnosing. I am trying to educate you so that you can help yourself in a self-care role. So we're trying to you know, encourage and reduce the impact or risk of problems. And it's not a licensed medical product acoustical frequencies are still experimental frequencies. I just, I don't know if I want to laugh at that. I say that every time, but obviously uh, we were spoken to existence, but the, those frequencies have not been studied enough to be anything beyond experimental. And do not forget that we do have names on our watch that may sound uh, like a medical diagnosis, but we are just trying to describe the problem so that you can find it better. We are not saying that you have that. Your medical community told you that, or you may think you have that from that particular research that you might have done on your own. And the Wave Watch works fairly easily, I think, uh, for us to understand. Uh, there are about 70 receptors in every cell, and they start to vibrate when they are introduced to certain frequencies. And so when one cell vibrates, the next begins to vibrate, and then the next, and then it just basically zips through your body at 4.3 times the speed of sound. And I was able to hear that one time. I was telling that story to somebody else, how I woke up in the middle of the night. I'm kind of short, short shortening my story, but uh, my teeth were on fire and I woke up in the middle of the night just kind of like this with my hands up to my face and screaming. I thought it was a silent scream, but it was like, and again, my teeth were white hot. And as soon as I put on osteomyelitis, which is a bone uh, infection, I just felt it goes and my uh, inflammation, the, the, Flame, the hotness in my mouth was gone just like that immediately. So um, it was very, very interesting to actually experience that and how fast it could go through your body. And don't forget that these frequencies do go through your body very, very quickly, like I just mentioned, but there are chemical frequencies also in our body from prescriptions, from other things, even from foods we eat, they're, they're a little bit slower, you know? And so uh, it's so slow that our body burns up 98% of chemicals, basically. And your body is only going to absorb 2% of those medications or other things that are more in a chemical form. And that's why we need to take so many things over and over and over again, because they are, you know, they are not being absorbed. They are burnt up by our body's heat. So I need to take a breath here. <laughs> um, this is all about radiation. And I think that, you know, I'm probably uh, preaching to the audience here, but um, radiation fallout is actually all around us. And most of us, you know, are, uh, we've paid attention to Chernobyl. I remember going, growing up as a kid and having a fallout shelter. I remember all kinds of things and it's changed over the decades. Uh, the last, you know, major problem was Fukushima. And uh, obviously when this was damaged in 2011, it leaked radiation into the air and the water. And it's still an ongoing event. So these elements are re being released into the air and water still today. And that's just from one, 
you know, event, there are so many hundreds of things in our, uh, around the world that could be adding to radiation, not just this particular one. But what's really interesting is that these elements begin to accumulate in our food chain. So once inside the body, these radioactive elements um, migrate to specific organs. So they know that the thyroid, the brains, the liver, and the bones are going to be hit the most by radiation problems. And I don't know that I you know, could have specifically rattled those off. You think about, I was thinking kidney, you know, might be added to that list, but this is, you know, a specific list that um, I was, uh, I saw on the internet to share with you. So this is a picture of holding tanks that are at the uh, Fukushima in Japan. And about two years ago, there was quite a situation where they started to release radioactive water into the ocean. So already, you know, even though they waited 12 years, they were doing a lot of work on this. Um, this water is now supposedly cleansed and safe to release into the water. So this has been going on for a couple of years. There have been at least four releases as far as I can tell in my research. And I'm not saying I'm a specialist in this by any means. Is this a little bit better here, maybe? Um, but this was released between August 23rd and March of, of this year. So that's what kind of, you know, struck my interest. Um, they have a thousand massive tanks, which I showed you a picture of a few of them. They actually have a thousand of those. And now there's 1.32 million metric tons of wastewater that they are going to be releasing. And so they started releasing it. And uh, they, they have the green light from the International Atomic Energy Agency. And I was a little confused because they, this article uh, basically, you might not be able to see it. It looks like I've got my floating panels over it. But this is from BBC. They were saying that uh, there are four releases scheduled between August and uh, March of 24 of this year. Uh, but the entire process will take at least 30 years. So they're releasing more and more. So I guess that was my little question mark down here. It was written a little funny to me. They're releasing four but the entire process will take at least 30 years. They're not telling you what the release schedule is for the rest of them, you know. But a couple of different articles were questionable about this. Do you want to add anything, uh, Joseph or J John, at this point? Making sense? Just kind of giving you a little bit of information here. And I was pretty no, fast. But we do have a, a few requests to, to remove the uh, black bars from the screen. We've got a small square uh, right at Asia 66 on the link there. Um, and then we've got one in the upper left corner. I think that just requested. must be our images. I think that's all that is, you think? No. Is that better? That's not it? Um, well, let's keep going see what else you can come up okay, with. Okay, so I took our images off. Okay. I was thinking, hoping that's what well, it there's, was. There's one more uh, right, right down by Asia 66. Do you have anything that's over over nope. the slide? Not, okay. not on my screen. I do not. Sorry about that. Open, okay. All right. Okay. So this is going to be a huge process. And so obviously there was lots of, um, you know, talking back and forth and various agencies involved. China was involved. Um, Japan, Korea, everyone in that area was obviously really uh, involved. And there are so many questions and problems and public outrage about it. And they're saying that uh, they were able to remove most of the toxins in that water, except for tritium, T-R-I-T-I-U-M. And uh, this cannot be taken away. There's no technology to remove that from the water. But their thousand tanks are so overflowing and there's no room to add more. 
and um, they can't start more cleanup until they get some of that water, wastewater out of there. So they are now releasing it. And some um, organizations are saying that it is very um, low and that this is okay. And then obviously other organizations say, no, it's not all right. There's still problems with it, you know. So controversy, just like with everything that is happening in our world. So Robert Richman, who's the director of the Koala Marine Laboratory in, 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 in Hawaii, says that it's ill-advised and premature. And he says that they're not thinking everything through. And this is the environmental, you know, um, your, or excuse me, agency that's working with this for the nuclear uh, release. So one concern is that diluting waste water might not be enough to reduce its impact on marine life. Basically, that's what they've done. They've they've diluted it, and pollutants can like tritium can pass through everything. So they go up the food chain, and they can be bioaccumulated. So they will build up. And obviously, people are eating fish from the ocean. We're eating shrimp. We're eating you know, tuna, all of that kind of idea. So how bad is this? Is this a concern? Some people are concerned, some people are not. So um, Robert Richman added that the world's oceans are already stressed. Uh, there's uh, acidification, overfishing and pollution. And when you see all of those dumps, the dumping ground in the ocean of, of miles and miles of floating plastics, it's kind of shocking what we've done. And now we're stressing it more by releasing this idea. So another idea that uh, Robert Richman added was that um, it's just not going to affect the Asia Pacific area. Already in 2012, they had found that uh, bluefin tuna had transported radioactive isotopes across the Pacific to California. So that was years ago. And now they're starting to dump more and more radioisotopes into that wastewater and release the wastewater. So this was a chart that I found and I thought it was kind of interesting. I hope you're, uh, you know, I was really fascinated. I hadn't read up on uh, this for years. You know, I read up on it when it happened and uh, I thought this was very interesting. So what they've been doing, like I mentioned, is putting all of this wastewater in. They also have ground and rainwater leaking in, and they're putting the contaminated water and re trying to remove it. They can remove everything except the tritium, and then they plan to discharge it into the sea, which they've been doing for a couple of years now. And the reason that March 2024 is interesting is because after that date, they expect to ramp this up and possibly release more, but they haven't told us how much more they're going to release and that kind of thing. So this is the dilution of the tritium, and this is kind of what they're telling us. They're saying that it's way below what the Japanese regulatory limit is and this emission again is supposed to be low and some of it may be even treated a second time in these tanks but again these storage tanks are full and so they're basically being forced to release this and there's a lot of outcry about it there were lots of pictures that I could have showed you and you can see that on your own of uh, the um, protests and everything that is happening or did happen a couple of years ago. So this is expected to continue for decades, but I kind of jumped into this particular uh, slide just a little bit quicker. I just told you that in March, 2024, the pace is going to pick up. <laughs> They're going to do more. They're going to release more. This would, uh, they have only emptied 10 tanks in the last two years. They have a thousand tanks. 
So I don't know if anybody can do the multiplication there really quickly and tell me, but you know, if they've got a thousand tanks and got 30 years to do it, how many tanks are they now going to do a year instead of doing, um, you know, a two and a half a year is basically the two year li uh, time limit there. So that's going to pick up the pace. So should we be concerned and is there anything we can do? And then I found one more idea. Here's a nuclear fallout map. And this was just really quickly after it happened, but they know that fallout, you know, lasts for a long, long time. So definitely so much of the world was um, affected by this. They say at least a third of the world was affected by this nuclear fallout. And then I found one more chart to share with you. I hope I'm not being too boring here, but, um, you know, this is just a way to, you know, kind of show you how the, the bluefin uh, dolphin, or excuse me, the tuna um, and, and different fish can be um, picking up this. These currents are going to carry water around the Pacific. It's being circulated. So it is not necessarily staying in one spot. And they are actually taking, they made a tunnel that was a mile long and they're funneling the wastewater that they have tried to clean out that tunnel and then releasing it into the ocean. And so this is, you know, some of the, the tides and the, the, and the currents that occur. So we could definitely be getting a lot of exposure, Alaska, Canada, look at that. And then the U S also, and then one more idea. <laughs> and uh, you can go back and see these later if you want, or do some of your own research. If this is really interesting to you as it is to me, because I want to know what is the new rate? How much are they going to be releasing? So um, back in 2011, when it happened, we were told that we would have extremely minor health consequences in the U.S. And I'm not sure that they would say that now or what they can say, just saying that that's what we were told. But I think most people want to take care of themselves on a deeper level. And that's what the Wave Watch is all about. So for those of you who might be concerned about radiation from many, many sources, I was just kind of emphasizing one because it was in the news uh, this, you know, last month. And, you know, we've been hearing about new threats all the time. So the Wave Watch specifically has radiation detox on it, and it has EMF and electrosmog detox. So those are the two main really specific ideas. We also have, you know, all kinds of detoxes, 24 different detox ideas. And I really think that all of them work together. So I suggest that people play at least once a week. And sometimes I will play them a couple of times a week, you know, more than that. But so many detox ideas are definitely uh, needed to help, uh, clean our bodies up just a little bit. But the radiation detox was made specifically. And then again, the EMF and electrosmog detox. So what happens if we are concerned about radiation from, from any source, not just the one I, I put the most time into and, and mentioned to you, but the thyroid is going to be hit first. And most of us do know that from years of hearing about uh, problems with radiation, but the thyroid gland shields us. And when we're deficient in iodine, we can have extreme problems. So if we're deficient and then we're exposed to a radioactive problem, it will bind to the thyroid the radioactive iodine or the, or the radiation will, will bind to the thyroid and lead to serious health problems. So I would also play thyroid, all the thyroid ideas that you can in the organs folder. That is really, really informative to, and helpful to do that. So I can't see my sons. I kind of turned that picture off. Uh, Joseph and JR, do you have any questions or anybody have something to add at this point? Does that take care of taking the images off? Does that take care of the problem? We've still got a couple of um, 
there's one black dot in the upper left corner and one uh square black square in the kind of bottom right that oh. we've had some uh, okay i'm yeah, moving so, it again i'll try that see if that okay so and, uh, what i we, really oh sorry I was, I was gonna say we do have um we had uh, one question uh seafood so somebody just said that given all the radiation in the ocean what about seafood is it safe to eat have you heard anything yes. about that? Yes, I don't have any stats on that. I mean, how hard is that for them to give us figures? Um, John, did you have a comment on uh, anything going on on uh, Fukushima wastewater release too? I'm just saying, I, I, I think there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of differing opinions out there about it. Uh, I think that uh, from what I've read, um, they did some qu like quarterly releases and. Um, it's been through uh, some some different treatment, and um, it's really hard to say. And um, but I do hope that we can uh, continue to work on detoxing for things here, and um, I hope that we can be a, a strong voice for um, caution in the future. But I, I wouldn't be necessarily terribly alarmed from some of the things that I've seen. But I do think that we need to be. Uh, be mindful into the future, that's for sure. And to take care of this planet that we have been given. I, I thought you were saying that they were testing it, but there were no numbers yet. I thought that's what yeah, you I'd, mentioned. Yeah, I'd seen, uh, I'd read a bunch of articles about how, how it was being tested, but I was not able to find any articles that talked about the results from such tests, which is, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting. Yes, I would I like to say, see results. They've had two years of releasing it. So what are the results? So in the meantime, let's be I, cautious. I'm not sure it's two years yet, uh, Linda. Um, I believe it started in August of 23. Um, so oh, we're looking yeah, at, I'm we're sorry. closer to six months. All yeah. right. Um, and But Robert Jones uh, has just asked a question in here that I think is really interesting, um, which is, uh, is there a, a module or, or a frequency for microplastics detox? Um, because we're starting to find much microplastics in, uh, well, it's in drinking water, it's in actual fish that we eat, and it's in all sorts of things. Um, so what do you recommend for detoxing of that, Linda? I do not have a, a label that says microplastics detox, and I am looking for that. I'm trying to see if there's the, something that has been measured, you know, that we can access. But at this time, it's a no. But I would, you know, think that all of the chemical ideas, and that's why I'm saying play everything in the detox folder, because there may be some frequency in there already that would help with the microplastics, you know, and Okay. That has usually proven to be true that there are similar frequencies that might be helpful. So play everything. Okay. On the detox um, side. On the detox. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And then Martha says eating cilantro with fish and seafood helps deal with mercury in the water and potentially with other toxins. So that's a, that was cool to hear a little bit about. Um, and he's saying that de debris from RO filters is the main problem. I was not aware of that. Um, but that's, that's very interesting. And what, um, oh, the, the RO filters are reverse the osmosis filters. filters. Okay. All right. And then, um, Susan, while, while we're answering questions here, um, Susan's asking, asking about the, if there's a setting, uh, on the wave watch for lowering the diastolic, which is the bottom number of the blood pressure. Not specifically. I believe it just says blood pressure. You know, okay, just blood pressure. Okay. And then um, Kat would like to add that lemon essential oil can help break down plastics. So thank you, Kat. Oh, that's a good one, Kat. Thank you. Thanks. I like that. So uh, some of you might know that I'm a, a, a natural sea salt fanatic. And the other thing I'm fanatical about is uh, iodine very specifically iodine, because that's not actually in the minerals. So um, I have used a uh, Lugol's um, solution for, you know, over 20 some years and, uh, you know, told people about it. And uh, I, I love the product. It's been in use for actually 180 years. And see, what we have been told is that we should use salt that has all the minerals taken out of it. And then they have put 
a synthetic iodine back in it, you know, if you can say it that way. And um, so we're still not getting iodine. We've been taught. I remember thinking when I was growing up, we were so careful to use the right amount of salt. We listened to the information that was out there. We put salt in our food. And then all of a sudden we were told to take it out. So I remember being in 4-H and baking cookies and our recipe might have had a, a teaspoon of salt, which would have been Morton salt, quote unquote, with iodine in it. And then all of a sudden the information was to take that out and we would only put a pinch of salt in. So this has gotten us and had, has had us so confused for many, many years on what to do. But what I can tell you specifically is we need those 80 minerals and then we need to be taking potassium iodine separately. So the reason I like the Lugol solution is because it is an iodine and an iodide in the same product and different kinds are used by different organs. And I'm going to have a slip up here because I'm trying to remember I work with breast health and I believe it's the iodine, D-I-N excuse me, I believe it's the iodide, D-I-D-E, that is helpful for breast health. So that's why you want a product that has two um, connections with iodine and iodide in it. You may look for your own iodine, obviously, but I'm saying it, whatever you're searching for, it's really good to get a product that has both of these in it, if, that, if I'm making sense there. And the way I have told and taught people to use it for uh, 20 some years is to actually rub it on different areas of your body. So specific for breast health, I have had examples of women who had lumps, who came in with lumps, and they I had them rub the potassium iodide, the Lugol solution on their breast, and those lumps went away. There were a couple of times it was almost overnight. I can't remember any more than that, but it's, you know, sometimes it was a longer time period, mm -hmm. but iodine is one of the best products for protecting your body from uh, radiation. That's why we're talking about it. Now, it is definitely safe. You're going to read the directions carefully for your particular product and then use it uh, correctly. Um, there is an iodine receptor on every single cell. That's what we haven't been taught. I think that's so, so important. Um, as I was looking, um, you know, setting this information up, I was fairly disappointed on how many websites were saying, oh, we don't need iodine, you know, especially the newspaper articles. We're fine with iodine. There's no problem. Uh, we don't need to, you know, <laughs> and that is absolutely not true. Uh, Dr. Guy Abram, who is a uh, iodine researcher has said that 90 to 94 percent of our population is iodine deficient and I will show you why in, in a minute but if we had trouble with radiation if there's something coming across or we're exposed we put that with our laptop on our lap you know uh, we're going to be having uh, problems with radiation so iodine is one of the major things that we need to keep in our system because again, there's an iodine receptor on every single cell. So how can you tell if you're deficient in iodine? Now in my um, you know, couple decades of working with iodine, I honestly think I've only seen one person who was iodine loaded. And you can do a patch test. So when you decide what kind of iodine that you would like to purchase, that's your choice. I'm just saying that I use I, uh, the Lugol's iodine. Uh, you can paint a little square on your, you know, your abdomen, your inner thigh, or your breast. And you make sure that's not going to get wet. You know, that's not going to be washed during the day. And then check it several times during the day to see how fast that color fades. Obviously, you're going to paint a patch and it's going to be a little bit red, you know. Now, obviously, make sure you're not getting mercuricum iodine, you know. I, I remember using that as a kid. That's what we put on our scrap, uh, scratches and scrapes and things like that. But that is not what we're talking about. We are talking about a different type of iodine. So anyway, paint this on your body somewhere and then see how fast it fades away. Honestly, our breasts need a lot of iodine. And I actually had one lady 
paint her breast with iodine before she left, left my office where I specialize in breast health. If some of you don't know that, if this is your first time on here, I've specialized in breast health for years. But anyway, she painted her, her uh, breast that was problematic with iodine uh, with a you know, two inch uh, patch. And she stopped, she pulled off the road and called. She said that color was gone in 10 minutes. Now look at this chart. If the color is gone in two hours or less, you're extremely deficient. She was 10 minutes. So color is gone in four hours, you're very deficient. Color is gone in 12 to 16 hours, you're deficient still. And you know, if it's still there after 20 hours, you're moderately deficient. But if you have color in that patch area after 24 hours, your body has enough iodine. And I'm telling you, it's really hard to be loaded with iodine at this point in time. And I'm not sure I got, I have the slide next that I, I wanna share with you why that's so important. Um, yes, I do have the slide. So hey, actually, the reason, before we yeah. talk too much more about iodine, we've got two people that are wanting to talk about exactly what kind of iodine. And I think that might be kind of interesting for them to be, for, for your advice moving forward. So Robert is wondering about a tri-iodine product that has three different iodine products within it. Have you heard of that sort yes, of thing? Yes, and those are usually pretty good. I'm just telling you to make sure that you have iod uh, that you have iodine and iodide. Mm -hmm. Those are the two most, okay. most important okay. things. Mm -hmm. And then Martha wants to know about Earth Harmony Naturals, Blue Gold's iodine. Um, Blue Gold's is the one I prefer. Okay. And there's different and frequencies. That, yeah. And there's different strengths. I started to say the word frequencies. There's different strengths yep. of it, you know. Okay. So, Sounds yes. great. I, mm -hmm. uh, oh, I appreciate it. That's perfect. And then we have another question, but we'll do that one later because I think we're we're deep into the iodine right now. So let's okay. keep let's keep rolling with that. All right. So this is the reason that so many of us need to get iodine and have it on hand. I'm using the word radiation. Uh, you know, I've talked through that. This is why we need to have it on hand because we are flooded with fluoride, chloride, and bromide. And guess what those things do? They take the place of iodine on every receptor cell. So there's an iodine receptor on every cell, but it can be flooded with fluoride, chloride, and bromide. And that's because of the, um, the chart. But now, of course, I've lost the name of it. The, uh, can you help me out? There's a chart with the atomic weight. What's that chart called? Yeah, the periodic table. <laughs> periodic table. Yeah, Thank they're you. heavier weights. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's so I'm I'm so glad to have somebody help me on on the uh, idea yeah. on that chart. But That's anyway, right. so we are flooded. Gee, where do we get fluoride from? Hmm. Where do we get chloride from? Uh, where could we possibly get bromide from in our society? So our bodies are so full of, of toxins that will replace iodine. There is no way that some of the uh, publications that are saying, oh, don't worry about iodine. We have plenty of iodine or, oh, there might be 30% of us that are deficient. No, I firmly believe and uh, agree with Guy Abrams. Again, Dr. Guy Abrams, who is an iodine specialist. Um, who is saying that 90 to 94 percent of the population can be deficient in iodine. So uh, this is why look at the list of things that it does here. I don't know if I need to read these. No, I, I, I think it would be. I mean, obviously, we know about fluoride, fluoride and chlorine in the water, but it's bromide. Is that from bread or where, where are we getting bromide? It is in our bread. They have taken the, uh, we used to have iodine in our bread. Every slice of bread had a really good amount of iodine in it. And they took that out and they put uh, bromide in the flour instead. And so that was again, something that went against us. And then when you have, when you get a new car, what's that smell? Isn't it uh, formaldehyde? What, what's the smell in a new car? Yeah. And some then that's related to content. bromide, some of those things, you know, so bromide is all over and uh, it's, it's in a lot of different things too, but obviously we're told to drink water, water, water. And if we're drinking, you know, <laughs> regular tap water, fluorinated and chlorinated water, there's no 
I, there's no way that we could have enough iodine in our body because it's been replaced with these negative things. If you take a shower in regular water, every cell in your body is exposed to the fluoride and chloride, you know? So we have to learn some ways to reload our body with iodine and just start taking iodine again. And it, I, I was so thrilled actually to be able to gather this information up uh, from different sources that I've used over the years because I would forgotten about some of it. You know, so if you look at the thyroid, the, the whole idea, I've got it used to make um, thyroid hormones for our body but it controls our body temperature. Does that have anything to do with cancer? You better believe it, okay? So when our bodies are not at the right temperature, we set ourselves up for more cancer growth. Um, it actually con uh, controls the direction of the fluid flow through your teeth, protecting you from dental decay. Did you know that? I thought that was interesting. Flo who would have known iodine and dental problems? And then of course, we're gonna convert food to energy. Iodine controls every hormone in our body. That's because there's an iodine receptor on every cell. It detoxifies chemicals. We've already talked about that. It also detoxifies heavy metals. Well, here's a big one. Detoxifies biological toxins food poisoning, and snake venoms. Now, some of you have been really interested in the snake venoms lately. And Dr. Artis is the person who's telling us about those. Um, it's used as a surveillance mechanism for abnormal cells in the body. So if it finds abnormal cells, it causes programmed death. So it helps with cancer in many different ways. It's an antiseptic. Look at this, it's antiseptic for bacteria, algae, viruses, and parasites and fungi. It re reacts with tyrosine and histidine to inactivate enzymes and denature proteins. So that's gonna help with our allergies. It helps with autoimmune mechanisms and regulations. And how many times lately have we heard the word autoimmune problems, autoimmune problems? And it controls connective tissue function. I know I'm making a lot of this, but it's so important. And I kind of want this to be in your mind that Dr. Uh, Guy Abrams, again, who I've quoted a couple of times, is saying that, you know, this is the cheapest way to actually help our health is to have iodine in our system, that uh, the world's health problems could be eradicated very, very quickly with the addition of iodine. But they are not telling us that, not at all. So here's what I'm so proud to say the Wave Watch has on it also. Now, I did put it in a different folder, and it's on some booklets, it does mention what's in that particular uh, viral immune support uh, you would go to germs, to viral, and then you find viral immune support on the Wave Watch. And inside that are the frequencies for vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and iodine. I mentioned that twice because it's a great viral support, but it's also a detox idea. And the reason I didn't label this is because at some points in time, we have been told, oh, no, you don't need to worry about vitamin C, there's too much information on that. Oh, vitamin D doesn't say, doesn't do what they say it does. <laughs> you know? Not same way with zinc. So I guess I was trying to make sure that I covered it, but maybe not, uh, you know, made a big thing about it. So now I kind of need to let you know that I did put vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and iodine. I put those exact frequencies into one folder that I call viral immune support. And I could have put it in the detox folder too and call it detox support. But anyway, you have iodine in there. Now you can't just loop iodine by itself because all of these are mixed together. So all one frequency includes these four ideas. Hope that makes sense. But you can take that viral immune support frequency and loop it because it's so important for so many uh, health problems. Maybe you don't have uh, 
iodine handy, but you have it on the wave watch. So another idea uh, would be that they are now saying, and they've tested that probiotics may help with a radiation overload. And they have, uh, you know, done testing with radiotherapy. Obviously we're talking about radiation therapy. And um, so they do know that probiotics may be very helpful for that. So I don't know if you take probiotics, but if you're worried about some of the problems that are coming up or want to be prepared in times of a crisis, make sure that you have some probiotics on hand. Now, there were there are so many brands of probiotics. I haven't studied these all. Uh, all I can tell you that this one, uh, I do, uh, a lot of the probiotics need to be refrigerated. But again, in times of emergency, that may not be possible, you know, or if you're traveling somewhere, that kind of thing. So I, I'm a little, I feel a little bit safer about having one that doesn't necessarily have to be refrigerated. And basically, it's just a couple of different bacteria inside these probiotics that are helping with the radiation. Uh, I didn't see a name of them, but I have heard it mentioned several times that a couple of bacteria are helpful for radiation. Sorry, I could not find the names of the exact bacteria. Obviously, we can go on and on. But they have done studies that prove that garlic and ginger and onion are anti-radiation properties. So we want to eat lots of these. So eat your food and maybe grow these. I have these in my garden. This isn't my garden picture, but I could go out and pick it and it would look just like this. So these can be helpful for oxidative stress. So eat a variety of things. So then here's just a few more ideas. I think this is a little video. It's just a minute and a half, hopefully. Um, it will give you some information. It is advertising a product that I have not used, but I thought it was worth showing to you. Obviously, that was uh, advertising the superfood that they wanted to tell you that would be uh, helpful for radiation. And it's all uh, really good to be able to, to do that. Am I back again? Oops. Your video is still. Um... Yep, still there it is. As you're Maybe. finishing uh, removing that, yeah. um, and talking about radiation and detox and some food, uh, Robin has a, a question that fits right in with that. She said that she just finished radiation treatments in her mouth, that her saliva and taste buds are burned, and now she has dry mouth. Is there a frequency on the wave watch for dry mouth? Oh, not for dry mouth, but I would do the radiation frequency because that's what it okay. is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I just want to make sure. And uh, yeah, so. But uh, I thought you were doing some some great stuff. So maybe just um, try hitting escape escape key if you're full screen on that YouTube. Just yeah, okay, there and then maybe. There's also a green. Um, there's also a green thing that says or a red thing that says stop sharing your screen. A little red bar. Oh okay. 
It's not exactly, um, it will work. I, that would help. I'm not sure why that got stuck, but I think that showed you that you, with a little bit of looking, you can find some food preferences. And I've got a few more to show you that could be very helpful for radiation. And you've got the wave watch, you know, and we just need to keep it in mind. We need to be learning that we can protect ourselves. Uh, I did see another uh, idea from a uh, doctor who said that he's testing patients and everybody has a little bit of radi radiation and, um, you know, so many organ systems. So it definitely is something that we need to be working on and working to um, uh, prepare and protect ourselves. See if I can get my share back up. I have just a couple more slides and it just kind of jumped on me here. While you're doing that, uh... Danielle that owns a bras thermography said she has several women allergic to iodine. Is there something else you would recommend? I think I mentioned that somewhere. Maybe it's not this slide. Let's see. I guess there are the frequencies on the wave watch. Uh, yes. See, if there's an iodine receptor on every single cell, it's a little bit hard for me to say that we're Ooh, wow, look at this again. That we are really allergic to um, iodine because it's it's part of our, our you know, every single mm -hmm. cell has an iodine receptor. Mm -hmm. So when we are allergic to iodine, there is a possibility that it really isn't an iodine allergy. It is something else that is in that food that they haven't discovered yet. But there are several different allergy places that you could go to and get some testing and get some uh, relief with those allergies, especially if you think you are sensitive to iodine because it is so important. So if you are allergic, quote unquote, to iodine, you could have all of these troubles that we mentioned. You are missing the uh, one fuel for your body the supplement for your body that can help with all of these. So uh, you can, again, uh, find some alternative ideas for uh, getting rid of allergies. And of course, the Wave Watch has a whole section on allergies that I would try also. And then you could try the uh, very small patch test again to see if you reacted to that after you had some work done with allergies. Very, very important. Okay, man, I had to really do a lot. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we're finally back on track with what I wanted to show you. Um, there is a whole book out that's called Radiation Protective Foods. And it's a menu for the nuclear, nuclear age. <laughs> nuclear. Nuclear age. <laughs> so... Um, my sons have been teasing me saying I'm, I'm having trouble with the pronunciation there. So anyway, we've got it. The book is Radiation Protective Foods. And so these are other foods that I also pulled out of different sources, but this is a whole book completely written about them. It's very, very interesting, I think, to uh, you know, have on hand if you're interested about that or just do your own research. So here's a list too. We've already, someone's already mentioned the Corella and the, uh, uh, there was one more green that they mentioned um, that is very, very good. So cruciferous vegetables, most of them, uh, reishi mushrooms. There was another kind mention on the video that stuck on me. Uh, vitamin C is huge, and that's why the uh, Wave Watch with the viral immune support um, is also a very good detox idea. Uh, coconut oil is good. Ashwagandha, apples, beets, kelp, seaweed, rosemary. So rosemary oil, and someone also mentioned that lemon oil was good. So you can find quite a few products. And if you have a pretty varied diet that isn't limited to um, processed foods, you are going to be getting some of these ideas. So um, ginger, green and black tea, you know, onions, lemons, here's the lemon idea, avocado, sauerkraut, horseradish, and sea salt. So all of these could be good. Now, on the negative side, what we do know is that meats and dairy are going to be higher because those are the animals. We're eating the animals that have susceptibility to, 
you know, accumulating some of these toxins in their bodies. And then obviously we are getting those higher toxins. So if you are a big meat eater, make sure you're taking some of these ideas along the way to try to um, break that down a little bit or nullify it or neutralize it, whatever word you would want to say. It is pretty important to make sure that you are uh, protecting yourself if you eat meats because there's getting to be more and more problems with that. Let me see if the next slide will come up correctly. There's a lot more little black boxes appearing and, and disappearing from the screen, by the uh, way. Um, but you know, before it. we before we get into this next piece, um, I've got a few different questions here, if you got a sec. And I apologize, there is a train yep. in the background. But um, so um, uh, Isabel is wondering, she says she's allergic to shellfish. Didn't know if that meant that she was allergic to iodine. Um, and I'm, but I thought I'd ask you about that since uh, on a personal level, I, I'm also allergic to shellfish, but I eat them all the time still because I don't care. So I just <laughs> do it. didn't know that, my own son. I didn't know you were sensitive to shellfish. <laughs> So I would go to somebody that really works with allergies and see if you can get that because they can do some really unusual things without medicine and uh, uh, help you work through that allergy problem. Also, to repeat, we have all kinds of allergy frequencies on the Wave Watch, okay? And then if you are allergic to that, then that makes the Wave Watch even that much more valuable to you because you are not getting the chemical, uh, you know, iodine, you're getting the frequency for iodine. So that should be completely safe for you to use and get your body to uh, working with iodine better than when you think you might be allergic to it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so uh, yes. in my and opinion, then... it would be a safer way to make sure you're getting iodine into your system. Okay. Okay. Martha then, said that you mentioned something about the germs folder and, and it hadn't come up correctly on her version of the watch. I don't remember what you were talking about with the germs folder at this moment, though. I'm sorry. That's where you're going to find the viral immune support. So you'd have to go to germs and then you open germs and then you would uh, arrow down to viruses. You open the virus folder and viral immune support is the second one in that folder. And help? Star, yes, and Star had her hand raised, uh, and she also just asked a question. So uh, let's just answer her question live. And then Kim yeah. has got one that I've been holding uh, onto for a second. So Star's question says, what is the best course for smoothly detoxing after chemo and radiation? For smoothly detoxing? Um, no, no, I'm smoothly. Uh, but smoothly. what's the best? Okay. Yeah. Um, What's the best idea for detoxing after chemo and radiation? You know, I, I'm not an expert on that. You know, I'm not a medical doctor and, and don't work with, with radiation, just trying to alert you that the radiation can be detoxified out of your system. So you might be able to just do a search on that. Um, one that I would especially think would be good is smoothies. That's why I was kind of trying to clarify whether it was smoothie, smoothly. But uh, smoothies are loaded with all kinds of things that would take out radiation from your system. And Green Smoothie Girl is a great one. So go to that particular website and she gives you a free recipe. In fact, I just uh, printed off this from her site yesterday. It's a uh, you know, an all-purpose smoothie recipe and uh, shows you a way to make almost a thousand different combinations. And then what I would suggest is that you apply some of the ideas that you learned today, the foods that are really good for protecting you from radiation and detoxing and add those to your smoothies. So those are going to be one of the better things. And then staying off of meat, uh, if you can, you know, very low uh, meat products for a while because they are going to have extra uh, problems with radiation in them. And if you've just, you know, gone through a radiation course, you do want to minimize that. But uh, sorry, that isn't the best answer. That's just to start. And you would want to go ahead and do some of your own research or consult with somebody that is a professional in that field. And speaking of chemotherapy, uh, Kim was wondering about a folder that would help strengthen one's heart. 
if there's any damage from congestive heart failure because of chemotherapy. Uh, she had, a, had her friend run detox a lot. Yes. And then there is a heart folder. It's in the organs. You would go to the icon that's labeled yep. uh, organs. And, and she mentioned that she would also have her run the heart folder. And then yep. was wondering, and Kim was just wondering if there was anything else you recommended to help with that sort of thing. Oh, um, I have added, if you have the new 1000 frequencies, there are arteries and then there, there is deep vein thrombosis in, in veins, you know, and blood okay. arteries, blood would be in the chronic first icon. And then veins would be in pain. So you would go to pain and then you would arrow down to the folder that's labeled veins and there's deep vein thrombosis in that particular folder that might be helpful for heart problems. Okay, I had this chart from another time, but it really spoke to me and I've showed it before, but radiation sickness, look at what this is. You're gonna have the loss of taste and smell, lung problems, neurological problems, and you're going to have a big cytokine storm, which means all kinds of things happen. And, you know, it's just overwhelming. It's huge, the uh, problems that come up with that. So uh, obviously blood clots. So radiation sickness, this can be more from our EMFs and our 5G. And we're just barely mentioning to them today. That's a, you know, a, a little bit different topic, but similar. It is very, very similar, obviously. So any of the ideas that we have been talking about are for EMFs and 5G. And obviously you want to know where your 5G towers are in your community. And hopefully you're not living underneath, <laughs> right underneath one of the 5G towers or whatever. Um, I don't know if my friend uh, Libby Ray is on, but I was kind of uh, surprised the other day. She told me that her community had an amazing amount of uh, towers in, in her area. And I live in Olathe, and I think there were 49 towers within a three mile radius. And the area in Springfield, Missouri that my friend lived in, you can correct me on this, Libby, if you're on, but I think she said uh, 400 and some uh, towers were in a three mile radius in her hometown. So you could be just living in a place that has a lot more problems than you realize. And so that's why we need to pay more attention to this detoxing, you know, isolate the radiation and the EMF uh, and electrosmog detox once in a while and play those for a longer point in time. So isn't that kind of interesting though that this chart points out that these ideas are all connected or all similar uh, problems. So, and then don't forget that we do have the loss of taste and smell on the wave watch. So if you've had some problems with that, that is something that you can play uh, in particular. And that is in the senior area and it is under brain that's where they get all the problems from the brain there. Um, I think we're kind of winding down, but I did want to share with you that a lot of times um, detox is um, laughed at by the medical community. Uh, see, even this sciencebasedmedicine.org <laughs> says that detox isn't real. Um, if you read through this, it, it it's kind of, I don't know how it could be. They could say that detox isn't real. It is a legitimate market marketing or medical term, but they're saying it's been turned into a mark, marketing strategy. Um, but this website even claims our bodies are accumulating toxins. So we need to detoxify. They're saying it is unscientific. So they are making fun of Dr. Oz. and. The quote even says, more often than not, his health advice is wrong, except when it comes to detox, when it's consistently wrong. So again, I try to show both sides a little bit, and you can tell I am kind of making fun of this one, because how could we not know that we need to detox in today's day and age? Everybody would know that we're eating things that are, you know, there are toxins in our food, there, we're breathing toxins, the list is endless. But here is still a website that is saying that detox isn't real and saying that Dr. Oz is definitely wrong about detox. 
I think you're agreeing with me because you have the Wave Watch and hopefully you're playing the detox <laughs> uh, older once in a while, as often as you can. Um, just a couple more ideas. Uh, here's EMF and electrosmog frequency set. Make sure to play that. And you can also use crystals for an EMF protection. So Shungi and black tourmaline are some of the best ones. I've got a big, pretty big stone myself. Um, you can uh, carry stones with you, set them up in your space or use them for meditation. I have a stone right on my computer, right beside my computer. I have different ones. And those are definitely all for protecting me while I'm setting up my computer. I just had to show you my other stone. I have two of these and they're sitting right by my computer. So they're trying to be protective. So a couple of other ideas um, are plants. So aloe is one of the best plants to help EMF problems. And guess what I have sitting right in my office about four feet from me? One of the biggest aloe plants uh, some people have seen. So, uh, Huge to have aloe in your house somewhere, but set it in your office or an area where you're uh, having a lot of things with EMS or by your TV, something like that, if you've got light for it. So plants are huge. We can't forget about those. So I'm saying we have to use hopefully the Wave Watch or we can use the Wave Watch, but there's so many other things that we all can work together. So aloe, again, is one of my favorite plants for detoxifying EMFs. And then a couple of other ideas just to kind of close this out. People are always asking when they should play a particular idea. And I have kind of showed this before, and you can look this up on your own, that you can actually buy a clock to put on the wall. And I've been thinking I would get that done, just haven't done it yet. But uh, these are some times that specific organs in our bodies are basically in charge. I guess that's the way to say it. So from like seven to nine, that's your stomach. And you know, these make such, uh, it, it makes such common sense when we really think about it, you know. So when you wake up early, in, you know, from five to seven, what's the first thing we do? You know, release our bowels. Duh. <laughs> so that tells us our large intestine is kind of, you know, predominant in our body. And that's the time to play anything for um, digestive, if you're interested in that idea. Uh, from three to five in the morning is a great time to detox the lungs. Look at that idea right there. Okay. Liver is from one to three. Detox the blood. Good time to detox the liver. And so it goes on and on. So this is really a helpful little chart if you want to know a particular time. Now, obviously, in the middle of the night, you may not be able to play, you know, liver detox just right then, but you can certainly set it before you go to bed and work with it that way. Now, from 9 to 11, uh, this may be a little bit different terminology, but the endocrine and metabolic balancing would be the thyroid. So from 9 to 11 is when the thyroid could be played and could be very helpful. Okay. So heart is at noon. Small intestine is from one to three and so on. So I think this is very helpful. Um, so look up if you are worried about radiation, if you know you've been exposed to something, if you live on the uh, West Coast, <laughs> be playing uh, supplement, or excuse me, be playing frequencies for your thyroid, your brain, your liver, your bones, breasts, and prostate are all affected by radiation. Obviously, every area is, but that's why we want to play the detox most of all. So very, very important. Uh, if you live in Nevada, there that's a huge area for radiation also. So it is so important to play some of these. And I have shown this before, but Dr. Ox Axe, excuse me, Dr. Axe has a detox drink that he publishes and it's uh, lemon juice, raw honey, and apple cider vinegar. Can't get any easier than that. So the detox drinks, we can be drinking some of these. There are zeolite supplements for detox support. 
and then detox baths of all kind. And so don't forget these baths are for radiation. So I'm trying to cover a lot of different ideas because that's our topic today is radiation and trying to make sure that we are cleaning ourselves out per periodically and helping ourselves. So you can make your own recipe or you can find this very easily, but usually, um, you know, one to two cups of baking soda, one to two cups of Epsom salt, um, however big a recipe you're making, one half to one cup of bentonite clay and a cup of borax. So soak in this for 20 minutes and scrub as much as possible to detox from radiation, heavy metals, and even parasites. So I think that's kind of winding down, except maybe for this last one. And you may have seen detox foot baths. So those are actually very, very good too. So you would put your feet in water. They do add a little bit of minerals to them. And then uh, they turn it on and it will start detoxing and your water usually turns color like this. Now, um, I need to talk to Michelle Moore a little bit more who uh, I, I'm on her show quite a bit. And she says that her detox bath is now completely well, no, she doesn't say completely clear, but almost clear. And that it's changed drastically since she introduced the Wave Watch uh, into her uh, system. That before she had done detox baths for years and her water, water was always this color. Now, some people think that this is very off the wall, that it doesn't do any good. But let me tell you. I've had one lady, I used to have a detox bath and I had one lady and her water was red and it was full of clumps of, it looked like jello and she was having trouble with her veins clotting. And so um, I've had all different kinds of things. I've seen little floaters and they were all um, yeast. And so everybody is a little bit different. And I even had somebody who did a foot bath and um, when I dumped the water out, there were little tiny flat rocks in it. And when I picked them up with gloves on, luckily, uh, you know, and I held it up, uh, the gentleman whose feet I had detoxed, um, whose body I had detoxed with this, um, looked at me and he said, you know, oh my gosh, that's, that looks like gold. And I'm going, yeah, <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like fool's gold. And he just started, you know, <laughs> It was really uh, hard to contain uh, because his wording was a lot more uh, unusual. I'm trying to just not say anything. His wording was very <laughs> emphatic. He painted gold paint on cars all the time. So if you can imagine what he was trying to say when we pulled out gold paint, basically that had co coagulated into a little tiny flat stone. So don't think that these don't work. They do. They do definitely work. But Michelle Moore was able to say that the Wave Watch probably worked just a little bit better because her water never cleared out until she started using the Wave Watch. So anyway, lots of things that you can do, and they're all good and helpful. So hopefully that will uh, give you some ideas because we do have lots of ideas about radiation going on around now in the news. Uh, the new ideas came out with the um, Fukushima. Uh, we are radiated every day through 5G and through you know EMFs and carrying our cell phones. And some people are carrying their cell phones in their bra. Some guys are carrying their cell phones in their front pants pocket and you are radiating yourself. So please do be careful with that. All right, I'm a talker today, I guess. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything we can answer? I think um, we had also talked about potentially uh, doing a little, a little sale kind of toward the end of some of these webinars, Mom, so. Um, uh, yeah, no, just the normal discount code, John. You can drop it in the chat. Uh, so. Yeah, just as a reminder, if you don't have a Wave Watch yet and you want one, there is a $100 off code. If you already have a favorite influencer like Michelle Moore, please use their code. But if you don't have a discount code, uh, the uh, John's going to drop that in the chat. It's Wave Watch 100. And uh, thank you all for joining. I see Mike raised his hand or have we already answered his question? Anybody else? 
I'm not sure. I actually have to Laura go, is wondering but... um, if sea salt would be better than Epsom salt in a detox. I think there are different recipes and some put some Epsom and put some put some sea salt, you know, so you can find different recipes with them. They would both be good. Okay. Uh, cool. So kind of either or both, depending on the recipe of the one you used. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody's wondering if we're going to have a sale uh, during for Mother's Day and we could potentially talk about that. What do you think, Linda? I bet we're coming up on that. I was going to suggest that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Karen wants to know about using Epsom salt in the ionic foot bath. I don't believe your instructions tell you that you can do that. Mine did not. It was very specific on sea salt. Okay, cool. All right. I think that's, oh, wow. Good. Okay, just one, just one more. Um, all right, so Marsha is wondering about the blue stone. And you said you have two of them by your computer. They look like bookshelf ends. Oh, this it's a, a geode. Yeah. yeah, this is the agate slice, I believe. And cool. then this is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Yep. And then, uh, perfect. Well, uh, we appreciate everybody attending and, uh, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.